A stingray, better yet, a blue spotted ribbon tail ray. It's a uh, species of, I think, Atlantic stingray. I don't think we have these in the Gulf, but I think we can turn this into that. And, uh, hmm, a stingray lure. This might be kind of fun. And here's sort of a uh, overhead view of it. So yeah, we've got quite a little project here. So, I mean, how cool is that thing? I could see, I could see a little, you know, three inch wide stingray going through the lily pads, getting blown up by a bass. What do y'all think? I say we do it, do it big time. All right, so where to even start? I guess we're just gonna have to just start kind of flattening this thing here and you know the stingray has like a bulge up in the front uh, you know where its face is I guess you could call it and then it you know the whole thing's kind of shaped like a giant tadpole in a way or, or a raindrop so to speak so we actually have what I would consider too much clay here but that's fine we're just gonna kind of get a a basic shape here just to start yeah I'll just keep flattening these sides here because we want it to bulge up in the front which is where the head would be and that's also where you could rig your hook you know your hooks not really gonna rig in in these really uh, flat extremities so to speak so, you know, you want a nice thick section there so that you can actually rig this thing because it's useless if it doesn't rig. So, yeah, that's kind of kind of our basic little profile there. And uh, now it's just kind of time to refine this quite a bit and uh, just kind of keep <clears throat> studying the shape, I guess, of the of the stingray, you know, from the front and back and in every which way that we can. So it has like these little wings on the back here. So I'm trying to, uh, you know, lighting might be a little bad here. So I'm trying to just kind of figure out how I can kind of carve these little wings in here, so to speak. That's, that's kind of literally what we have, are kind of these wing-looking things. So, hmm, it's definitely, definitely still a rough draft. So we're just kind of patting down some edges here. I think the, uh, I think the nose is maybe slightly more pointed, but, uh, you know, we're kind of just evening out our little wings here in the back best we can I patched it up with some more clay <clears throat> the shape of the tail is actually pretty close I just need to uh, fine-tune it some more you know, and we're basically just kinda smoothing things over best that we can just to get a a good shape and uh, yeah starting to come along okay See if that kind of gets us closer here. Okay. Eh. Yeah, it's definitely getting there. Kind of has those little wings on the back. All right, so the eyes on these things stick way up in the front. So what I've done is I've actually just kind of added um, two little clay circles here. I might need to adjust them a little bit. And I'll actually put my quarter inch eyes, or just however big, maybe even six millimeter or seven, up on top of that, um, just so that it looks like the eyes are really sticking up. So it'll, it'll be something like that. 
but that's not looking too shabby. I think that has the, the stingray look. This side needs to be kind of shaped maybe a little bit better. You know, and then of course we'll fire this and then sandpaper it. And then I think after that, um, it will be looking pretty good. So lots of little details here, still a long way to go. But uh, a stingray lure coming together, coming together quite nicely. Okay, not too bad. I think that's our basic shape there. And uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and fire this and then do a bunch of sandpaper smoothing to hopefully get a, uh, a really good master. And uh, we'll pour ourselves a mold today. And uh, it'll take a couple hours for the silicone to set up, so there's a chance we might even get to pour a bait same day. Um, we'll see. Just uh, give me, a, give me a, a couple of hours here to see if the silicone will set up. But for right now, we're gonna put it in the oven, then we're gonna do some more finishing. All right, so we have it done. It's been fired. And now starts the fun part where we do this for an hour. So, yippity skippity. We're going to be sanding for a while using this very fine sandpaper and uh, just trying to fine tune some surfaces and some edges just kind of all over here and there. Yeah, so I'll meet you back when I have it maybe a little bit uh, more refined here. Well, the sanding continues. I uh, actually moved up to a grittier sandpaper. It was just, uh, wasn't getting uh, as far as I wanted to with the really fine stuff. So we'll probably go back to the really fine stuff just for kind of one last sanding coat after we're done uh, with the grittier stuff because this is shaving shaving off uh, much 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 quicker uh, where I want it to so yeah we're just kind of going over the whole thing and you can you can see how well that's taking uh, taking some of the clay off so yep an hour of this obviously I'm not gonna film it all but uh, yeah we are sanding away over here Okay, so we have our master um, uh, cleaned off. We cleaned off all of the just kind of residue left over from the sandpaper. It leaves all that kind of clay powder on there. So just like before, we're just gonna cover the master here with some uh, Vaseline, just give it a light coat with our fingers. Gotta be real careful on that tail. So we're just going to give this thing a nice coat. This will act as a mold release, um, so to speak, to hopefully uh, retrieve this master in one piece. You know, I back when I did the snake lure uh, a couple weeks ago, I didn't think I was going to get the master back, and I did. And, uh, you know, it had a, a thin tail like this, maybe not quite this thin. Um, but it did come to a point, so we will just have to cross our fingers there. But, uh, yeah, looking real good here. I, think I need a little more over here, yeah. And uh, we're about ready for action. And you can see I've got this nasty box here. I uh, actually... Um, I actually had to extend the box because when I uh, laid the bait in there the first time, it wasn't quite long enough. Um, so, oopsie there. So we're just gonna straighten it, move it forward just a smidge. Okay, looks good to me. Just kinda press it down. Just put a little instant bond glue on there. And, uh, and I believe we are all set. Okay, we've got our silicone poured in there. And uh, we're just gonna add some catalyst here. You're really supposed to mix this up to like certain proportions. 
but I just do it by color. So once uh, once everything is mixed up here, I can just kind of tell by the color of the silicone if it's uh, purple enough or if it's not purple enough. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna mix this in and uh, then we're gonna pour the bait or pour the mold. Okay, so we've got a rather large uh, box here but uh, I'm just gonna pour it real slow you can see there's quite a bit of air in it I did not degas this um, we're just gonna pour it slow and then you can hit it with a heat gun or uh, just kinda shake the box a lot of the air will settle up to the top all on its own and uh, yeah I need to get some Legos and and uh, a couple wooden uh, pieces that way I can build better boxes here instead of these uh, nasty cardboard contraptions that I do use <laughs> I think we can definitely do better all right we're gonna move things along up here and the cardboard box I had built uh, looked really good it, it was pretty clean um, you know I reinforce it with some clay on the edges but uh, we can definitely we can definitely build a better box for sure all right so we are taking the uh, box apart okay it's definitely close to being done yeah that's that's pretty set up it sets up pretty quick Well, I definitely don't make the prettiest looking molds. All right. But functionally, hopefully, uh, hopefully it, it will be okay functionally. That's the, what matters is what goes inside the mold, right? Well, we'll come back to that later. I just wanna peel these off. Sure, there will be a ton of cleanup to do on that uh, underside. That just seems to be the way it goes. Okay, here's where you got to be a little more delicate. It's on the top. Well, technically, it's the top. I refer to it as the underside, but really, it's the top of the mold. Okay, that seam there uh, is glued really well, so, alright, yeah, there's gonna, gonna require a ton of trimming here, because that's supposed to be the tail of our stingray, come on baby, normally I wouldn't show you guys this part, but it's just one of the steps, and it's kind of neat to get that first uh, glance at the uh, mold here. So, kind of get that off. Come on, lots of glue right here. So, we're just going to ease, ease it off. Okay, there we go. All right, so. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so we're just kind of uh, gonna do a little trim in here to trim this up. Okay. something like that okay so the tail keeps going trim just a smidge further okay that might that might be okay look at that we got it back okay so <laughs> probably the world's first ever hand poured soft plastic stingray mold there it is um, hmm now we just have to make 
this color. So I'm going to mix up um, some blue for the tail, because I'm not going to paint the tail blue. I'm going to pour the tail blue. So some blue for the tail. Then we'll just kind of meet it up here with some gold, pearl, and some brown pigment probably. Pour the body. And then we'll uh, dot it with some blue dots and go from there. <laughs> All right. Dead on plastic swim bait uh, floating blend. So we're just going to add a little bit of blue to that. And uh, let's see. And then we're going to add some pearl to it, which will thicken it just a little bit because that, that, that blue is a transparent color. So just a smidge of pearl. That will thicken it and give it some nice shine. And that's the exact formula we're going to use for our dots later. Then over here, I'm going to add some browns, Carolina pumpkin, not too much, okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead and stir that in just to see what that kind of looks like on its own. Yeah, nice light shade of brown, that's, uh, that's actually what I wanted there. Let me uh, move the camera up just a little bit. Yeah, hopefully y'all can see down now a little bit better. Okay, let's take a look at our blue here. Gotta get that powder in there. Come on now. Half of it's still on the knife, but that's looking pretty good. And then, also, some gold pearl over here in this brown. Because there's some gold in that stingray. He's got... He's got some gold happening in his face. So if I pull it up here, come on. Let's see. Yeah. There's there's kind of like some orange gold happening up in his face. You know, that's that's too bright. I'm going to have to darken that to an extent here. Okay. One drop of black. And we'll see how far that goes. And uh, I haven't mixed up a whole ton of, of plastic here. Now that definitely darkened it up. In fact, I'm going to do one more. I think that will actually be pretty close. Actually be pretty close. Yeah. That's looking alright. Let's kind of Compare and contrast. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of fades a little bit. It gets brighter up on his head, but the outside is sort of a brown. Yeah, that'll that'll work. I think that'll look pretty nice. Okay, so going to slightly angle this mold, and we're just going to pour a blue tail. Okay. Yeah, just kind of let it fill in. I'll probably trim some of that. Oh, kind of let it fill in a little too much there. Back that off a smidge. Already messed up my first pour, so I'm gonna have to. Uh, so I'll have to trim that a bit, but that's okay. Yeah, looking better there. Let me uh. Because that's technically the top of the ray at that point. Let me see what it's looking like. Yeah, the blue doesn't come quite that far up. So before I can pour the second half of this color, I'm going to have to trim here. All right. So we'll just stop there. Put that back in the mold. And here we go. We're gonna fill it in with this kind of chocolate gold pearl here. <coughs> Can't even believe I'm doing this. A stingray bait. Okay. All right. Well. Very interesting, fingers crossed. And uh, we're gonna heat gun this tail where the two colors kind of meet. 
just to try and get a good um, just to try to get a good bond there so we're just gonna kind of melt that together okay this will probably just kind of just come right out I would think without too much uh, hassle there yeah Ugh. okay <laughs> look at that that's pretty cool yeah interesting I've never seen anything like it I don't know about y'all but I sure haven't Wow okay so the spots are actually fairly big um, so this is blue pigment and uh, blue powder mixed together yeah so given the size they're actually fairly big dots they're not uh, and they're bigger in the center and they get smaller towards the edge is kind of what I can tell so we're just gonna slowly and carefully dot our ray here okay oh man I'm excited already this is pretty neat um, yeah and then it looks like the ones out here are a little smaller on the edges just kind of kind of what I'm seeing here yeah nice big ones up here I think that's gonna look really nice everybody um, I did let's see when I was in middle school I did uh, what what you called a science fair project and I did it on skates and rays skates being just kind of another kind of ray they're all kind of related to sharks and the blue spotted uh, ribbon tail ray or stingray like we're making today was my favorite one when I was growing up so that's kind of why I chose to do it and that's kind of the inspiration for this whole thing I don't think I would have even thought about making a stingray had I not uh, thought about how cool this this one is and then we're just going to give it a, uh, a hit with the heat gun all around. Try to really set in, turn it up, really try to set in our pigment. Yeah. Because I don't want these dots to run whenever we dip. That would be bad. Work too hard on this bait just to ruin it with, uh, with clear tips. So. Anyway, that's looking pretty cool. Okay, so we have some 7 millimeter eyes here. Come on. Nope, wrong one. Come on. There we go. And uh, I think they'll look just fine. So we're just, because they stick out so much, we are going to glue them. Even though they have um, the backing that's already already sticky so here we go perfect all right just gonna kind of face that forward a little bit all right I like the pupils to kind of or I like the eye to sort of be looking forward if that makes sense so you see it's kind of pointed that way so we're gonna Put it on, pointing that way. Here we go. Okay. Beautiful. All right. We're going to carefully huh, clear dip this bad boy. So, okay. Just going to pull it out real slow. Yeah. There we go. A blue spotted ribbon tail ray. 
fishing lure, if you can believe that. Well, we'll just kind of leave that little tag on there. Perfect. All right, guys, check it out. Blue spotted <laughs> stingrays. I love it. I absolutely love it. That is freaking cool. There they are. That's it. <laughs> oh, I can't even move my rod in here. Sorry, guys. Hold on. It's hard to, to hold this. Oh, wow. That hook definitely weighs it down. Tell you what, though. It actually would be really, really weedless if we look at the way that it rigs. I could, uh, I could throw that through the pads. Or you could take it to salt water on a big jig head. Jig it down on a wreck or something and, uh, something would definitely, definitely take a stab at it. Well, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Something definitely different. And, uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of curious to take these fishing, you know. I'm going, I'm going on vacation next week uh, down to a little island on Tampa Bay. You know, I have a lot of family that saltwater fishes. My cousin is a charter captain. Might see if either myself or one of them could put these to use, and um, you know, hop this thing along the bottom like a fiddler crab or something, or a pass crab. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of different things that this could kind of be. Obviously, you know, it would look like a real stingray on the bottom, so something would bite it. I mean, it's saltwater, so I think it's pretty cool. Me, me myself, I'm going to throw it in some lily pads up here and uh, try to get a bite on it like you would a topwater frog because it would sit kind of on the pads and it would probably actually flip upside down because that's where the weight is, that's where the mass is, is this top part, so it would probably actually sit like that and skim across the pads um, inverted, so to speak, which wouldn't really be a bad thing because they would see the color, but uh, I can definitely find a way to catch a bass on this for sure. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, you know, kind of a little exercise in, in comedy here, but you know, I said, hey, I want to make a stingray bait, so I did. So hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you next time.